What's up folks, Jeff Everhart here. It's been a long time since I've made a video, but I figured I'd pick it up with a question that I get asked all the time, which is how do I handle Google Forms checkbox inputs in Google Apps Script? So let's get to it. So over here on the right, I've got my Google Apps Script project. And then over here on the left, I have this burrito order form with just a couple of different options. You can see we can select this protein. Um, this is a, you know, basically a, like a multiple choice. And then we also have these check boxes here where we can select multiple options. You can see what that looks like when it's stored inside of the Google Sheet. And then the way that I've wired this up is pretty similar to the way that I've done this in my other videos. Um, if we come down here to triggers, we can see that this script project is set up to listen to the uh, form submit event on the spreadsheet. And when it does that, it's gonna pass this event object into our function that is going to contain all of the values that we submitted in the form. So the first step is going to be to use this event object to get these uh, optional toppings values. And so I have the Google Apps Script docs open over here um, and I've pulled up the form submit spreadsheet event and we're gonna use this named values option on here to do that. So uh, inside of this function, I'll declare a new constant variable and we'll just call this toppings. We'll set that equal to e dot uh, named values. And then in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need the actual name that we use uh, for this particular script item. So we'll go ahead and copy op optional toppings here. And then if we come back here and look at the docs, that's not all that we need to do. So this is actually called an object in JavaScript and we're accessing it using this property, right? So optional toppings becomes a property on this named values object. And then that contains an array really with only one item. So what we're gonna to need to do on here is throw some square brackets, and then we'll throw a zero in there to access the first item of the array. And then let's go ahead and do some logging to just make sure that we are getting our toppings appropriately. So we'll log out toppings, um, and then let's go ahead and also logger.log, let's log type of topping. So type of is a JavaScript keyword that's gonna basically print us the type, the JavaScript type of this value. So let's go ahead over here, make sure that that's saved, and then we'll go ahead and submit our burrito order form, make sure that that goes through to the spreadsheet okay. And then what we can come down here to it, this app script menu is click executions, and then we'll come to the latest execution and here we can see, all right, those are our options, queso and lettuce, and it is a type of string. Okay, so right now this is just a string, it's not an array, and it is in a comma separated format, right? So we've got queso, comma, space, lettuce. So knowing that, there are a couple of ways that we can work with this just off the bat. So we know that this is a comma separated string, and a lot of what people ask me is like, they basically wanna make decisions based on what's in this list. Um, and so we can do that without converting it to another data type. So we'll go ahead and say if, and then open up some parentheses, and we can say toppings dot includes. Okay, so this is a string method. We're saying if the topping string includes, I don't know, let's say queso, uh, and then we'll say or, so we'll do two pipe uh, characters, which is the logical or, and I'm sorry, we'll do that outside of this paren. So we'll say if toppings includes queso or toppings uh, includes, we'll say, I guess what's our other cheese? I think it's just cheese. So we'll say if toppings dot includes queso or toppings includes cheese, then we'll go ahead and log out a particular statement. So we'll say logger dot log, this is cheesy. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that out and then we'll come over here and submit another response. And we'll say, do that and we'll say queso and avocado and submit. And then we can go check our executions. And sometimes when you're checking these execution logs, there will be sort of a delay. So you might have to hit this refresh button. Okay, so great, there we can see we were getting our values back, avocado and queso. We can see that this is still a string, but we're printing this is cheesy. 
Um, and so that is how we're doing that, right? So uh, we're using this if statement to check multiple values, right, using this or. So we could also, if we just wanted to do one, we could just do one thing. So if we just wanted to check for queso, for example, we don't actually need that or, um, but that's one way that you could do that. So now let's try one other if statement using an and, just so I can demonstrate that for you. So if you wanna check if multiple conditions are true at the same time, we'll use a logical and operator. So I'm just gonna open up my if statement here. And then we'll say if toppings dot includes, I don't know, let's go back to our list and see what we've got here, how, what we can say. So like, let's say, um, you know, let's say if they wanted to include lettuce and tomato, so we could say toppings includes lettuce and then and we're going to use uh, two ampersands to signal the logical and in JavaScript. Say toppings dot includes, um, we'll say tomato. And then inside of here, if both of those things are true, then we'll go ahead and log out you know, maybe you just need some bacon, right? They're all, they're partially there to a BLT. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, and so, right, if toppings includes queso, we're gonna log out this is cheesy. If toppings includes lettuce and tomato, then we're gonna log out you just need some bacon. All right, so we'll come in here, we'll select our protein, and then I'll select queso, lettuce, and tomato. And here we should see when I submit this, we should see um, multiple logger lines for each one of those things. And again, you know, we're gonna have to refresh. Sometimes we gotta do this a couple times. All right, cool. So there we said, had queso, lettuce, and tomato. Uh, still logging out the type of string. This is cheesy, and then you just need some bacon. Okay, so cool. So let's hop back in here and let's talk about how we could transform the value of toppings if we wanted to do other things with it right now. Because right now it's just a string, which means that it's just this string of text, right? So the way this, that we can operate on it are limited and maybe we wanna do some more interesting things with it. Um, and to do that, we can transform that string into an array. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna declare another constant variable and we'll call this individual toppings. And we'll set that equal to toppings. And then we're gonna do dot split, which is a string method. And what this does is it basically looks for whatever character or pattern that we provide right here and splits the string into substrings. So it's gonna find every instance of a comma and um, this, and then it's going to split that out into an array. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and down here, let's do some more logging. So we're gonna say logger.log. Then we're gonna do type, we'll do individual toppings first. And then we'll do, um, right after that, we'll do logger.log and then we'll do type of individual toppings, okay? And so we'll save that out, submit us another response. Then we'll say beef, we'll still say queso, but we won't say lettuce and tomato this time. And we'll go ahead and click submit. And then we can come down here to executions. And as you can see there, sometimes uh, not, not everything gets picked up at once. We've got to refresh just a couple of times. Okay, so here you can see uh, how this has changed, right? This is our first logging statement where we're logging out the string, right? Here we log out the type of toppings. We're getting our this is cheesy inside of our if statement. And then here we can see now that after we have actually used that split method, that has changed, right? Um, so we've get, got these square brackets around it. It's still comma separated, but this is now an array. Um, and so that's cool. So we're pretty close. And I think it says it's an object, but really it's an array. Um, I think that this is just sort of one of those uh, intricacies about Google Apps Script. So uh, maybe a bad example here, but, but this is an array. So we'll go ahead and delete this. Um, and you could do anything you could to an array on this individual toppings thing. Um, and so what that lets us do is, um, you know, we can loop through it and transform it in different ways. So we could say, you know, const, let's say lowercase toppings uh, equals 
individual toppings uh, dot map. So this is a function that's going to let us loop through each topping. And this is gonna take a callback function and I'll write this in a slightly different way. So I'll say this is gonna take a function and this function is going to get each individual topping as we loop through. And then inside of that function, we're gonna do something to it and then return it. So then we're gonna say return uh, let's say topping dot to lowercase, and then that's going to be a function. Um, and so then if we come down here and we log out lowercase toppings, well, we should see those transformations be applied. Select queso, lettuce, tomato. I'm going to go ahead and throw some salsa in there. And then once that runs, we'll come over here check our executions, refresh to get all of our logs. All right, very cool. And so there you can see, right, we get our initial string value. That's still a string. We're printing out, this is cheesy and you just need some bacon. And here we've transformed it into an array. And then we basically use that map method to loop over the array and transform those values using that to lowercase. There's a lot of other things you could do here. Once it's in an array format, you could use a for each loop to loop through it. Um, that's really up to you. But I think that this gives you sort of just a general overview of how you would work with those checkbox uh, inputs and how you could either just use the string values to look for a particular value um, using either or or and logical operators, or you could transform it into an array to do some more advanced stuff. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you supporting the channel.